Hello friends. In this video, we will discuss about development length. So, what is development length? It is a length of steel bar needed to be embedded into the column to establish the desired bond strength between concrete and steel. In simple language, it is a length of steel bar which holds two concrete members together. Concrete members like beam, column, footing, etc. Development length is provided at column beam joint or column footing joint. Here you can see in the picture, this is the development length for beam column joint. This is the main bar in the beam, which is extended from here to here to safely transfer stresses from beam to column. And this portion of length is called as development length. So now let us understand why we provide development length. The answer is development length creates a safe bond between bar surface and concrete. It also ensures during ultimate load conditions, the reinforcement bar should not slip through the concrete. It transfers stresses or load from beam to column smoothly. Now we understood why we provide it. Now let us understand what will happen if we don't provide development length. If we don't provide development length or if we provide less development length against the required, then the structures will be prone to encounter failure due to slippage of joints. In such cases, the bars will not break first, but the failure will happen at joints and laps prior to breaking of reinforcement bars. In short, reinforcement bars will split from concrete. Let us take the case of beam column joint in which development length is not provided. If we apply force more than maximum permissible limit, then the restraining force between the beam and the concrete column will not be sufficient to hold the beams at its position. The beam will come out of the concrete column if the development length is not provided at the time of construction. The development length is needed to provide support to the beam to reduce the chances of beam coming out of the concrete column. Hence, it acts as a supporting member for the reinforced beam in the concrete column. Now let us understand how to calculate development length. The formula for calculating development length is LD is equal to 5 into sigma s divided by 4 into tau BD. Here, LD is the development length, phi is the nominal diameter of reinforcement bar, sigma s is the stress in bar at the section considered at design load and tau BD is the design bond stress. This formula is used to calculate the required development length in mm for any given diameter of bar. Same formula is used for limit state method as well as working stress method. Development length of bundled bars. When there are large number of bars required to be provided based on design, it may not be possible to place the bars separately with necessary clearance. In such cases, there are two options. Option number one, increase the size of concrete member, that is column or beam. Number two, bundle the bars in groups of two 3 or 4 bars. Here, if we consider option number 1 and if we increase the size of concrete member, then there will be cost implication. So, it's better to go with option number 2. If we bundle the bars, then these bars will have a low contact area with the surrounding concrete when compared to the bars placed separately. This affects the bonding between concrete and rebars, which is often concern, especially in beams. To compensate this, the development length is increased suitably. If two bars are bundled, then the development length shall be increased by 10%. If three bars are bundled, then the development length shall be increased by 20%. And if four bars are bundled, then the development length shall be increased by 33%. Now let us understand what are the factors that affect development length. Number 1. Compressive strength of concrete. The development length required for a rebar is inversely proportional to compressive strength of concrete, which means if more is the compressive strength, then less would be the required development length. Number two, density of the concrete. If lightweight concrete is used, development length must be increased. Number three, rebar clear cover. If we increase concrete cover, then development length will decrease. Number 4. Rebar center to center spacing. If the rebar spacing is increased, then more concrete will be available per rebar to resist horizontal splitting. In beams, 
Bars are typically spaced about one or two bar diameters apart. On the other hand, for slabs, footings and certain other types of members, bar spacings are typically higher and thus required development length is less. Number 5. Coating of rebar Sometimes in some projects, where the structure is subjected to corrosive environmental conditions or dicing chemicals, there, epoxy coated rebars are used instead of normal rebar. Studies have shown that in such cases, the bond strength between concrete and rebar is reduced and thus more development length is required. Number 6. Rebar Diameter Most important and common factor that would influence the development length is the diameter of the reinforcement used. It has been observed that smaller diameter bars require lower development length than that of the larger diameter rebar. So friends, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.